uh, rather natural uh, to be here. I'm sorry that it's just necessary for me to read uh, the script of which I brought along. Uh, maybe I'll leave you from it. Uh, and if I get caught in the middle, as I say, uh, as agreed to, uh, to uh, continue for me. Um, the term of Office of Errol D. Fosnott, of which I want to speak, when from 1948 to 1968, a term longer than that of any president of the college. Uh, I hope that that doesn't prove to be true, since I think uh, we can get expect Steve Morgan to stick around even longer than that. You'll note that I will too use the term college in, re in my remarks uh, since Vern was not officially uh, a university until 1977. Even before I talk about Errol Fawz, not a bit needs to be said about the background years of C. Ernest Davis, 1938 1948. C. Ernest Davis performed a remarkable feat of keeping the college open during the war years. At the height of World War II, the student body dwindled to 95 students, most of them obviously girls. He was able to, uh, how he was able to offer enough courses and to pay the faculty with no more students than that uh, is beyond my understanding. Obviously, during those four years, he lost many of the fine faculty that the university or the college has kept together the, during the Depression years. And immediately after the war, we lost even more faculty. So when Farrell Fosnott appeared on the scene in 1948, the student body was growing with the return of the, uh, the TIs. But the caliber of the faculty was at a low ebb. Having been part of that faculty, I can speak to these efficiencies. <laughs> In fact, if we had time, I could tell you some real horror stories of some of the faculty that we had at that time. <laughs> Harold's task was to pull a college up by its bootstraps. And that's, uh, that is exactly what he said about doing in a very little fashion. Let me to emphasize one of the most important things that he did. Start with one of the achievements uh, early in his tenure, namely the accreditation of the college by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges in 1955. This was the first accreditation of the college dash university by the Western College Association. It was a seminal achievement in the history of the college dash university. It marked the tremendous progress that he had made in the short time uh, as president. And it was absolutely necessary for the future growth and development of the college. For instance, it made it much easier to, to recruit more capable students, many of whom had been going elsewhere because it was not accredited. Just to give one other illustration, of uh, the type of thing that happened following accreditation, Laverne was invited <clears throat> to, uh, 
to become a member of the Independent Colleges of Southern California, a fundraising group which included Redlands, Claremont Colleges, Occidental, uh, all of the other colleges which you, we associate with. A group which we had previous, previously we had not uh, been eligible uh, to affiliate with. Harold uh, Fosnott, in fact, became president of that group uh, with a matter of uh, two to three years. And all sorts of uh, developments of that sort followed our accreditation by the Western College Association. Turning it to another area, and all these put together, obviously, when Harold became president of the college, there were only three members of the faculty with earned doctorates. In fact, during one of the early years, if my memory serves me correctly, there were only two darn doctorates on the faculty. Harold set about encouraging through a host of means, sabbatical degrees and other incentives, uh, encouraging those of us on the faculty to continue our education. In 19, uh, 1957, I completed my work toward a PhD degree at, at the Claremont College uh, Graduate School. In 1959, Dorothy Dupler, who some of you may remember, uh, completed her degree program. The following year, Dr. Uh, Hanwalt and Cleo Berry completed their degrees. In the meantime, in 1956, Ernie Eikenberry, with his degree in hand, or when he came, uh, was invited to head the chemistry department. A few years later, I believe, and Bob Sierra can direct me on this, I believe it was in 1960 that Bob Neer, uh, again with degree in hand, uh, was brought in to head the biology department. By the time Dr. Fosnott required, he retired in 1968, 50% of the faculty had degrees uh, as compared with 10% when he took over in 1948. The faculty had been strengthened and not only that way, but in numerous other ways. And uh, compared with the time in 1950, which he himself referred to as the gloomy years. Another symbol of the uh, progress during the Fosnot years can be seen in the building project undertaken by Harold Fosnot. Uh, if you refer to the chart uh, on the board, which I can't see too well, but I think I know it well enough. Um, when Harold became president, and, and this is rather startling to me, there were three buildings on campus. I can remember this very vividly because that was true when I become, became a student here. There was Founders Hall, there was Miller Hall, and there was the old gymnasium. Those were the three buildings that had built, been built since the founding of the institution in 1891. So between 1891 and 1948, you had three buildings that had been built. Now there was a fourth under construction and that was Miller Hall, uh, that was uh, Woody Hall. Under Fosnott, Fosnott undertook 10 different building projects uh, that resulted in a, 
eight different buildings. It, if you start with the building we are now in, with the feature hall and what the, we now call the Monero building on this side of, this, of uh, Third Street, jump up to uh, Brent Hall on uh, thir uh, Third Street, no, what, on Dita. Come over to the chapel uh, in the middle of the block, go over to the end of the block to Studebaker Hannawald Hall. Studebaker Hannawald Hall were two different buildings. Studebaker Han uh, Hall was built first, and then Hannawald Hall was built two years later. Now that since they're joined together, we tended to call them Stu Hannibal's all, but they were still two different building projects. And then, of course, you have uh, Hoover Library, which became the law school, which will no longer be the law school. Uh, <laughs> it's something else. Uh, but uh, that was the Hoover Memorial Building, the Hoover Law School. Uh, and actually, that involved three different uh, projects because it had two different additions built on it. Uh, then you come south of there to uh, Davenport Dining Hall and it, that involved two different building projects because the dining hall was built at one time and about, uh, it seems to me, six years later the uh, present dining hall was built and uh, the little portico area on the north side, the uh, reception room we called it, uh, was built on. Uh, then the um, area on the um, um, old gym, the uh, Charles locker room and the old gym was built. Now there are a couple of other lang acquisitions were acquired, but we won't do them, those. Uh, but uh, 10 different pro building projects and uh, eight actual buildings that during his office, uh, term of office. That is a building project every two years. We've had nothing to equal that uh, until the last 10 years under Steve Morgan. Uh, tremendous progress uh, in that 20 year period of time. In addition, are, there are all sorts of other Developments took place, and I just have listed these individually. And I, I move away from the mic. Either that, or you can take the mic with you. I just listed a few of these. Uh, I could have listed another uh, eight or ten, which is was just as important. Uh, he reorganized the curriculum of college. Uh, we keep doing that over ten, five to ten years anyway, but it was very important in getting the accreditation uh, by WASC. Uh, he instituted the fifth year program in the master's degree. The first master's degree uh, was issued uh, under his term of office and the the first, up to that time, the program stopped at the end of four years, and uh, we is, he instituted a fifth-year program. Uh, he was instrumental in seeing that the Brethren College Abroad program, uh, BCA, was organized and implemented. Obviously, that took 
the cooperation of the other brethren colleges, uh, but he more than other uh, person was responsible for it. And in fact, he also initiated a, an exchange program with the University of Groningen. Uh, it's in that program, for instance, uh, that I taught uh, in, in a year in uh, Germany. Uh, I, there was two different programs. I taught in Germany. I was hired later by the World Council of Churches to do the study in Nigeria, uh, two different programs. Um, during his term, the student body was increased by 270%. That's the largest increase of any 10, uh, 20 year period in the history of the university. Uh, he tripled the faculty salaries uh, and increased those at the top end by f uh, fivefold. And he initiated the Summer Source Program, and that's the program which is still with us and uh, doing very well. Uh, by the way, he started the first Summer Session Program. Um, at the time, uh, it occupied a much larger place in the budget of the institution than it does now. Um, he um, initiated freshman orientation program, which is, was very much along the line, uh, which we uh, still have. And as they say, uh, go back to the history of uh, the University of Learn, and you can list uh, another 10 to 12 of these. Um, very important. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very important, it seems to me. That in the process of doing all of this, he created a spirit of cooperation, a spirit, a team spirit, among, among the faculty and various constituent groups that helped build a sense of community. Uh, which was appreciated by all, and putting it a little differently, it clearly built the basis for what was to come later. You could not have had the experimentation and the outward growth uh, under Lee the newcomer if you hadn't had the sound uh, foundation that was created under uh, Harold Fosnott, and you could not have had the growth of Laverne into the university without the sound foundation which is created by Harold Fosnott who took this institution and, as I say, literally pulled it up with bootstraps. Thank you. Something was said about the uh, present and the future. Uh, I made a statement at uh, some talk I made some time ago uh, about uh, the growth of the university, that uh, people that had been here in the Fosnot years and came back uh, uh, 50 years since, 
would scarcely recognize the institution because of the growth it had made. And I would still do that. We were growing so rapidly that we were not going to be able to recognize uh, the people that were here in the 1960s are not going to be able to recognize this institution in the year 50-50 um, or even 50-25. Uh, Steve is moving us along that trail very rapidly and uh, we, uh, we, we, we were becoming a different institution every day of the year. Yes. You didn't have to read it. Thank you, Herbie.